we are going to be going over APRS and specifically how to participate in APRS Thursday with your Anytone Radio. Hello everyone, I am Jeremiah W9JAM for BridgeCom Systems and welcome to another episode of BC Plus Live. Tonight, I am joined by two co-hosts. One is Andy, KC9SKV, and the other is Eric, N2KOJ. Good evening. Some things to keep in mind. One is going to be that you need to be near a digipeter or an eye gate that can pick up your APR signal from your radio and transmit it over the network. The other thing is making sure that your APR settings are set up correctly, whether you are doing digital or you're doing analog. Remember, that's for the analog APRS. I'll go through how we can do it through the DMR, Brandmeister Network, too, which most of us probably already do. All right. So, Eric, what do you say I pull up the APRS configuration screen on my 578, and we can go over the settings to give people an idea of what that looks like? Fantastic idea. Even the little one agrees. All right. So, share screen. Screen one. All right. So can everybody see the APR or the uh, code plug screen? See, si, senor. All right. So if you aren't seeing all the data that's in this screen right now, uh, what you need to do is on your CPS software, come up here to tool and click options. Uh, on the 878, it'll only have this right, or excuse me, this left column. It won't have the right column. Uh, make sure you've got GPS, Bluetooth, APRS, and APRS uh, receive turned on. Um, this applies to the 878 UV2 Plus, as well as the 578. All right. Then we can click on APRS. And we've got a couple of different settings right here. Um, the first one is your manual transmit interval. Um, which these are based in seconds. That's what that S stands for that's right here. Um, your APRS auto transmit interval, I've got mine set to three minutes. Um, fixed location beacon. Let's say you're in a fixed location and you just want it to beacon out your location. What you're going to do is turn this on and then you're going to enter your coordinates. Um, one way you can get your coordinates is actually to pull up your uh, address in Google Maps. Um, and you'll notice, uh, let me pull that up here. If we pull up the address in Google Maps, and let's say, I'm just going to pick the McDonald's here. See this at sign that's right here in the uh, address bar. The first number is going to be your north and south, and your second number will be east and west. When it's a negative, it's west. If it's a positive or doesn't have a negative sign, that's east. Um, same thing with the uh, north and south. If it's a minus, it's south. If it's a positive, it's north. So you can take this number, put that in for, I believe it's your longitude, or latitude, excuse me. I always get this mixed up. And then the second number you can put in for your longitude and choose west if you're in the United States. And that'll set a fixed beacon location. That'll bypass the GPS. Yeah, that's um, good if you're home and you don't you can't get a GPS signal. That's a perfect yep. perfect fix for it. Correct. Ron just asked a really good question. If you let the radio get a GPS fix, will it use that position if you turn on fixed beacon? I think if you have fixed beacon on, it's it it stays with the fixed beacon, not with what your GPS is saying. Correct. It'll stay it on fixed beacon it. only. Yeah, it supersedes it. Yeah, fixed beacon supersedes whatever you've got for your GPS location. I don't have um, the screen up in front of me, but if you're running WPSD, 
uh, your you can do your long get your longitude and latitude from the dashboard screen there too. There's a I think there's a special button there. And I don't have that open right now, but that's another way to to help it. Click on configuration, and then come down here to where it says node location and info settings. You'll see there's this. Uh, you can use this tool to try and calculate your location coordinates. Click here, click get location, and that goes based off of what your uh, internet connection is reporting. If you're in your computer and you don't have a GPS uh, signal in the computer itself, it'll go based on what your internet connection is reporting, which is usually fairly close. And I've also used the link that uh, Jonathan posted. I've used that before too. And there's apps for your phone and everything too that'll that'll help you with it. There's tons of them. Correct, um, Toby. To answer your question, um, how do you find out where to find an APRS node? Um, looked on APRS.fi, but couldn't figure it out. So on APRS.fi. Um, what you'll see is there's different weather stations that are designated by WX, but you'll sometimes see something that has a D with a star around it. That's a digipeter. And um, sometimes you'll see a I with a star. That's an I gate in most cases. Um, the other thing you can do is click on information and click on user guide or frequently asked questions. And that'll also uh, give you some information as well on uh, different things on this. Also, um, something that's been popping up a lot lately, especially in like my area, um, they're not putting call signs. You'll see um, domain names like the... Uh, one like Camelback, which is on Camelback Mountain up here in the Poconos, um, they're using Camelback. And if you click on it, it'll, it'll propagate the, the uh, call sign for it. But apparently that's a, I guess that's like something new that's starting to happen because in a conversation the other day, a couple of people were noticing, you know, when they're looking for um, Digipeters and stuff, they're seeing, but I'm seeing this name and I have to click on it to get a call sign. So that's a, a pretty good, uh, way to find one too. All right, and Greg, thank you for posting that. All right, so this is APRS.fi. There's also another website uh, that I believe is APRS.to, and this shows uh, right around here. Um, this will show a lot of the same information as APRS.fi. Uh, I just learned about this a few minutes ago. Because uh, Eric sent me the link for this one, I didn't even know this one existed. Yeah, that's written by that's uh, hosted by uh, N2RWE. He's one of the people that helps out with APRS Thursday. His site does it helps with logging and keeping track. Um, if you were to go, uh, if you put in N2KOJ4, all right. So if you put in N2KOJ-4, it'll find me. And then what it does is, in my location, I have three hotspots. They're all broadcasting APRS. I've got my two 878s, one's three is one's four, my three phones. And a lot of times they're all clumped up over each other. The nice thing about this website here is that if you hover your mouse over it and you click it once, it'll, um, it'll spider it out. So you can see, you know, if, if you put it over like the N2KOJ4 and you hit it, you click it once, it'll open up, you know, you'll see the W's and the D's and the, and the three and the four and the whatever other um, APRS icons are used. And it makes it a little easier to see it. A um, mm -hmm. couple of people I've heard on local repeaters and stuff prefer this one because it's more updated. They, they've, it's constantly uh, changing it's it's a pretty it's a pretty neat one. So basically, what I'm hearing is you just have way too many devices. Oh yeah, absolutely. Oh, okay, just checking. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll wholeheartedly admit, absolutely. <laughs> Figure why not? Yeah, absolutely. All right. So if we click show on map, 
This shows the location around where he's at. And we can scroll out and basically this is, you know, a whole area, but it's only showing his information right now. Yes. Yeah, so if you hit the if you hit the clear, if you remove my call sign from there and it keeps you over there, it should keep you over there. And then you see everything that's populated around me. 